the ranking member. Thank you very much. Uh, let me paraphrase what the chairman just said. While we praise our men and women, when the opportunity comes to put the money where the praises are, Democrats on this committee have consistently supported the funding of DHS's budget. We've consistently funded uh, the FBI's budget and our intelligence gathering agencies because we understand that those men and women who put their lives on the line deserve all the resources. Now, uh, taken from that, uh, we've not, on the Democratic side, ever voted against one of your budgets. We understand it. We can differ on the policy, but we don't differ on the fact that you need the investment. There are some members of this committee who've even advocated defunding the FBI. Now, I can't in my wildest dreams imagine if we had an impotent FBI where that would put us. Director Ray, if those advocates who wanted to defund the FBI uh, in this country, can you give us a snapshot of what that defunding would mean for the security of the homeland? Well, I mean, the FBI in the last year, for example, has arrested over 18,000 violent criminals. That's about 50 per day. So defunding the FBI would mean that many more violent criminals out on the streets terrorizing neighborhoods. We have, as I said in my opening statement, about 2,000 active investigations into Chinese economic espionage. Uh, restricting our funding would be a gift to the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, the FBI has about 380 uh, investigations into cartel leadership. Um, lifting our funding means more power to the cartels. Uh, the FBI has investigations into 100 different ransomware variants. Um, that's, and each one of those has scores of victims. Uh, limiting our funding means more, uh, more hacks, more intrusions, more damage to critical infrastructure. China alone has uh, the biggest hacking program in the world by far. Uh, they're not slowing down. They're not restricting their funding. So uh, from our perspective, it's not just about the, the hardworking career professionals of the FBI and their families and their kids that would be affected. More importantly, it's state and local law enforcement who are counting on us more and more. And more importantly than that, the American people that we're trying to protect from gangs, the Chinese, uh, government, cyber hackers, mm -hmm. cartels, child predators, et cetera. Uh, Ms. Abizid, can you say what uh, resource deficit would mean for your agency? Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, the National Counterterrorism Center has a couple of important missions. We're the primary center for the United States government to analyze and assess the foreign terrorist threat. We work on screening and vetting of individuals that are trying to enter the country. We support DHS and FBI in that mission with the intelligence database of known and suspected terrorists. Um, we do a lot of work across state, local, tribal, territorial, and federal authorities to do the kind of information sharing that's absolutely essential, especially in a dynamic threat environment like we have today, to keep everyone informed and armed with the information they need to protect against exactly the kinds of threats that we've outlined here for you today. So decreased funding for the National Counterterrorism Center, decreased funding for any piece of the overall CT architecture that works collaboratively together has an impact on our ability to stay ready against the, the terrorist threat. Thank you. Secretary Mayorkas, there's a supplemental uh, proposal uh, being put forth by the administration. Can you share with us what that means for DHS? Uh, Ranking Member Thompson, uh, that supplemental is dedicated to our critical mission of securing our border and also uh, battling uh, the scourge of fentanyl. Those funds are needed for personnel, technology, facilities, and additional support resources, critically needed to advance our mission. We are under-resourced and have been perennially. Thank you very much. I yield back. 